Hmm, is the camera on? Oh, hey, what is going on guys? Mr. Hollow here and I didn't realize it was Sunday again. Anyway, here's another episode of Tech Report Weekly. Good news everyone! Nvidia finally announced their new chipset for 2016 from the Pascal line, the GP100. Unfortunately, the bad news is the fact that no consumer product was shown or talked about at the conference. What we know so far is that the new chip is built on a 16 nanometer FinFET process and it delivers an increased speed of about 65% and around 2 times the performance per watt improvement over Maxwell GPUs. The new chip was pushed forward with the new Tesla P100 which uses HBM2 memory and provides twice the bandwidth of the one used in the Titan X, but it's aimed at professionals and deep learning systems rather than consumers. Hopefully we'll hear something about the new GeForce GTX 1080 and 1070 graphics cards soon enough. Nope, AMD has not been standing idle as Polaris is almost here and you can probably grab one at the end of June when it launches with the R9 490 and the 490X GPUs. The new chipset is built on a 14 nanometer FinFET process, the cards will feature GDDR5X memory and will be direct competitors to Nvidia's 1070 and 1080 graphic cards lineup. It's been a while since AMD managed to compete with Nvidia on a high level and I'm really rooting for these guys as I'd like to see the playing field level. Person Personally, I'm going to wait for both companies to bring out their big guns before I pull the trigger on any of them. HP has finally brought a laptop to the market that looks absolutely stunning. I mean, just look at those sexy aluminium and carbon curves. At 10.4mm, it's as thick as a AAA battery, which makes it thinner than any MacBook out there, weighing in at 1.1 kilos. It comes in two versions, both with Intel processors, an i5-6200U and an i7-6500U, 8 gigs of soldered LPDDR4 memory, a 13.3-inch Full HD IPS screen and a 256 or 500 512 GB SSD. HP says you should be able to squeeze about 9 hours of battery life and you'll also get 3 USB Type-C ports, out of which 2 support Thunderbolt 3, so in theory you should be able to attach a Razer core to that one. The pricing starts at $1250 and that premium price is totally worth it if you ask me. In the world of mobile devices, Huawei announced in London earlier this week the P9 and the P9 Plus. The P9 comes with a 5.2 inch Full HD IPS LCD display, 32 gigs of internal storage and 3 gigs of RAM or 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM, a 3000 mAh battery, weighs in at 144 grams and has a price tag of 599 or 649 euros. The P9 Plus, on the other hand, has a 5.5 inch Full HD Super AMOLED display, 64 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM, a 3400 mAh battery, 162 grams and a glorious price tag of 749 euros. They both sport a full aluminium body with an USB-C connector, Android 6.0 with EMUI 4.1, a Kirin 955 octa-core CPU, a fingerprint scanner and La Pièce de Résistance, a Leica certified dual 12 megapixel rear camera where one is monochrome and the other one is colored. It has an equivalent of 1.76 micron pixels, so more than the Nexus 5X and the 6P, and will yield you some stunning pictures and awesome bouquet effects. If you own a Nexus device, then Google's April security patch should be hitting your phone soon if it hasn't already, or you can grab the factory images from the developer's site. WhatsApp is now safe to use from prying guys as they turned on the end-to-end -end encryption in their application. What it means is that all messages that you send or receive will not be readable by anyone that hacks and intercepts them unless they steal your phone and reads them. The PS4 patch 3.50 was released this week and it brings remote play to PCs and Macs, the ability to appear offline to your friends, social improvements, schedule events, friend notifications and many other small improvements. Oh, before I forget, Meizu released the M3 Note, an aluminium body budget phone with a MediaTek Helio P10 CPU, 5.5 inch 1920x1080 IPS LCD screen, 2 or 3 GB of LPDDR3 RAM, a 4100 mAh battery, runs on Android 5.1 and has a tiny price tag of 125 or 155 bucks. If last week was pretty thin on news, this one was packed. Anyway, that's all for this episode and you know what buttons to press, so I won't be bugging you. However, you can subscribe and share now, you know. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!